I remember when I was 11, my uncle, Tio Roberto, took me to Washington, D.C. We saw many famous places, but the one place my uncle wanted to see the most was the White House. At first, he just stared at it. But then he started to tell me about the president. I remember my uncle telling me that I could grow up to be the president if I wanted. My uncle said that the president runs the government and that the president can change people's lives by signing a bill into law. I like the idea of helping people. I remember thinking that maybe someday I would become president. The founders of our country debated whether the executive branch should be headed by one person or by a group of people. It was decided that a single chief executive, called the president, would govern better than a group. Even though some people feared that a president would be too much like a king or queen, most agreed it was the best plan. The founders also had long debates about how much power the president should have. Many thought that if the president could veto or reject bills from the legislative branch, they would be too powerful. However, most of the founders were willing to take a chance on having a powerful president. To be elected president, you must be at least 35 years old and be born in the United States. You also must have lived in the United States for at least 14 years before becoming president. To run for president, it helps to belong to a political party. A political party is an organization of people who have similar ideas about how to run the government. There have been many political parties in this country. The best known are the Democrats and the Republicans. But there are many others, like the Green Party and the Libertarians. Political parties have conventions or large meetings where they elect one of their members to run for president. Delegates and my fellow citizens, I proudly accept your nomination. The party then helps their presidential candidate campaign. The campaign is to let voters know how their candidate will run the government. There is a presidential election every four years, so the president serves a four-year term. At the end of the term, the president can be re-elected for a second four-year term, but a person can only be elected president for two terms. The presidential election is held on the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. If you are at least 18 years old and are a U.S. citizen, you can vote in the election. People vote for the candidate they believe will best run the country. But the people don't exactly choose the president. That's done by a small group of people called electors. The founders of our country decided to have electors choose the president because they believed that the average citizen didn't always make the best choices. Electors are worthy citizens who are chosen by voters and political parties. There is one elector for every U.S. senator and U.S. representative in a state. This group of electors is called the Electoral College. The people's votes tell the electors whom the people want to be president. And it doesn't happen often, but if any elector disagrees with the people's decision, then the elector can vote for a different candidate. The candidate with the most electoral votes is elected president. So, it's actually the Electoral College that elects the president, not the people. Two and a half months after the election, on January 20th, the person elected president will become president. The president is sworn into office by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. I, William Jefferson Clinton, do solemnly swear. After a president is sworn into office, they give a speech about what they want to do for the country. With the American dream alive for all her children.
Our federal government has three branches, legislative to make laws, judicial to decide what the laws mean, and executive to carry out and enforce the laws. The president, the vice president, and the cabinet make up the executive branch. The president is the head of the executive branch. The president and the executive branch are located in Washington, D.C. The president lives and works in the White House. The role of the president is to run the government and carry out the laws made by Congress. The vice president, who is elected along with the president, will become the president if the president dies, resigns, or is unable to work. The vice president works in the executive branch but is also the president of the Senate. The Senate is one of the two houses of the legislative branch of our government. The other house is the House of Representatives. The Senate is a group of 100 elected people, two from each state. They create laws that help run the country. A majority of the senators must vote for a law to pass it. When there is a tie vote, the vice president can vote to break the tie. The cabinet is a group of people who give advice to the president on how to run the government. The people in the cabinet are in charge of the various departments of the executive branch. The president appoints these people. They will have their job as long as the president is in office. The Senate must approve all of these appointments and then the Supreme Court Chief Justice can swear them into office. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. The president oversees the executive branch departments, so the president meets with the cabinet members each week to make decisions about how to run each department. These departments actually do the work of the government. For example, the Department of Agriculture works with farmers and ranchers. The Department of Labor helps workers and businesses. The Department of Education works to make sure everyone gets a good education. The Department of Homeland Security was created to protect people within our borders. President George W. Bush created it after the terrorist attacks on September 11th of 2001. The head of each of the departments, along with the vice president, make up the cabinet. Every president since George Washington has relied on a cabinet for help in carrying out the duties of the executive branch. President Washington had three people in his cabinet. Under later presidents, the number of cabinet members grew as the executive branch took on more duties. The president and the cabinet are responsible for such things as educating our citizens, helping farmers grow crops, and managing our natural resources like trees, oil, and water. The Constitution says that the President's chief duty is to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. This means that once Congress makes the laws, it is the job of the President to approve them and carry them out. The most common way that the President carries out the laws is by working with the Cabinet on running the day-to-day -day business of the government. Part of running the government is having a budget that says how much money will be spent each year. The President's budget is a suggestion to Congress on how much money to spend, what to spend it on, and how to raise the money needed. The budget gives money to each executive branch department so they can do the work they're required to do by law. Let's imagine that Congress passes a bill requiring every public school to have a copy of the Constitution. The President signs the bill into law. Then the president tells the head of the Department of Education to include in their budget a request for enough money to buy copies of the Constitution for every public school in the country. If Congress approves the money for the copies, then the Department of Education can buy them and send them to the schools.
The president makes a speech each year to Congress. It is the duty of the president to inform Congress of the State of the Union, in other words, how the federal government is running. Every year, by law and by custom, we meet here to consider the State of the Union. The president also tells Congress what they can do to help the government. The president may recommend bills for Congress to pass. These are bills the president will sign into law because the president believes they will help the country. Thank you for coming. The president is our representative in the world. Me dio la bienvenida a su casa en Guanajuato. Our president meets with the leaders of other countries, such as Russia, Ghana, and Mexico. The president can make agreements with these leaders. These agreements are called treaties. The Senate must approve these treaties. Many treaties are for peace, and others may be for trade, territory, or some other common interest. The president is the commander-in-chief, or leader, of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and, when necessary, the National Guard. Our nation's military takes their orders from the president. The president visits many of the military bases to show support for the troops and to make sure the military is ready to protect our country. As commander-in-chief, the president can authorize the use of military troops overseas without declaring war. To declare war officially, the president must get the approval of Congress. To protect our country at home, the president oversees the FBI, CIA, INS, and other federal law enforcement agencies. These agencies help the president carry out the laws of the nation by enforcing them. They're like a police department for the whole country. I see now that my uncle, Tio Roberto, was right. The president is very powerful and very busy. There are many ways that all three branches of government watch over each other. These checks on each other keep the federal government in balance so that no one branch can become too powerful. The president checks the power of Congress by having the power to sign their bills into law or veto their bills. To veto is to reject a bill. Congress can check the power of the president by overriding the president's veto. To override a veto, two-thirds of Congress must vote to cancel it. The president can affect the power of the Supreme Court because the president appoints people to be Supreme Court justices. However, the Senate must approve these appointments. The president can make executive orders, which are like a law or rule that the executive branch must obey. The Supreme Court can check the power of the president by reviewing executive orders, but only when the orders are part of a Supreme Court case. If the president does anything illegal or against the law, Congress can impeach the president. This means Congress would accuse the president of serious wrongdoing. The president would then be put on trial in the Senate. The Senate will convene as a court of impeachment. The senators may be seated. I'm here today on behalf of President Clinton. I'm here to argue that he is not guilty. If the president is found guilty, then the president will be removed from office. President Clinton was impeached by the House of Representatives, but he was acquitted by the Senate. Acquitted means to be found not guilty. President Nixon was facing impeachment when he decided to resign from office. Resign is to quit. He is the only president ever to have resigned. The purpose of the executive branch is to enforce laws, lead the military, work with other countries, and run the government. The president makes sure that the laws created by Congress are obeyed. 
and the president is the leader we rely on to keep the federal government running. We also depend on the president to protect us and our rights. As my uncle, Tio Roberto, said, the president of the United States is a very important person. The president can change people's lives by signing a bill into law. It's amazing how one person, like the president, can help so many people. As for me, I decided to help people too. Good morning, class. Good morning, Mr. Garcia.